So uh, here, colleagues, uh, so it, it works. Yeah. Uh huh. So uh, we finished with uh, how to say face-to-face -face section, and now it's time to the video poster session. We decided to uh, replace the traditional presentation using just posters, yeah, printed uh, on paper and uh, hanged on wall, and. Uh, uh, we maybe invented the new format. So um, uh, we asked uh, the authors to send us the short video presentations. And now we have an opportunity to uh, watch these presentations. And uh, if some of you have uh, has any question, you may maybe write down these questions and then uh, we have an option to send these questions to our authors if some of the presentation will, will be interesting for you. So now I guess we may start. Okay, thank you. I'd like to add something uh, to my colleague that uh, uh, together with the short presentation, uh, they are coming also the posters in PDF format, which will be uh, presented on the content website. So you can also uh, check the poster and also the following presentation. Uh, and the first presentation is on me. Uh, I'm Adam Bless, uh, and I would like to present you uh, the comparison of Two laser scanners, like BLK360 and like BLK2Go. Uh, and, uh, uh, yeah, like BLK360 is a lightweight, uh, stationary scanner, uh, also in a lower price range, around 20,000 of, uh, American dollars. Uh, it's very lightweight and easy operable scanner. And, uh, according to the literature, the scanner is, uh, very suitable for, uh, skin to processes of, in the, uh, environment of building, uh, the scanner uh, has respectable accuracy uh, around four millimeters at ten meters, which is uh, suitable for um, uh, the uh, places for in the environment where the are on the high, like uh, administrative buildings and so on. Uh, uh, the scanner has three resolution settings. Um, at the lowest resolution, twenty millimeters at ten meters, uh, the laser scanner will uh, do the setup in one minute, which is a uh, it's, uh, I, I think specifically 40 seconds, it's quite uh, uh, fast scanning. And uh, together, uh, the scanner uh, can be packed in one bag, which is also very good for a fast scanning. And, and uh, the scanner itself is operatable uh, using the uh, app, Cyclone Field 360. And during the scanning and during the, the field work, it's possible to co-register the scanners and uh, check if uh, every registering went right. Uh, uh, theoretically, uh, something to delete or correct. So it's very good that uh, when you come from the field to the office, you can, uh, or you have already pre-processed scanning and there is not too much work waiting for you in, in the office. So that was the OK360. The OK360 is already uh, described in literature and uh, it says that uh, it's usable for, for BI and processes. But uh, last year, uh, Leica came up with uh, a handheld laser scanner, Leica BLK to go. Uh, which is based on plant technology and uh, the scanner is handheld. So you basically walk and help the scanner and the scanner is scanning the environment around you. Um, it's the, the, the biggest advantage, uh, no doubt, is that the scanning with uh, the handheld scanner is very, very fast uh, compared to uh, other stationary scanners. And also um, the range is quite good. It's up to 25 meters. So or, again, for indoor environment, uh, it seems like a good option. Uh, but uh, 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 we were not that sure about the accuracy, uh, so that's the topic of our uh, video poster that we compared the two. Uh, the result, the result is point called of two scanners together. Uh, just to add uh, that um, the scanner is not controlled by the uh, mobile app, but you can use the mobile app just to check uh, how the trajectory of your walk is going. If there are some major mistakes or if the walk is interrupted somewhere, so um, it is also good too. Uh, here, to compare it to BLK360, you can't do the registration between the walks uh, in the field, so you have to do it in the office. And, uh, of course, the scanner, the scanning itself is very fast, but you have to add some extra time for the registering, because the registering between the walks isn't as easy as the registering between the single setup. So to compare the accuracy of the scanners, uh, we choose three different uh, objects with different characteristics. One was the administrative building. We also scanned the, the, the scanned only indoor environment. 
He also scans the uh, elements of this building to his historical character, and also read the church walls, uh, which were which were um, uh, a bit uh, hi higher, so uh, to test the range of the scanner. So here in this table you can see the time difference between the scanning, which is uh, which is very significant. Uh, in 20 minutes you can scan all the elements in this building. Um, here is the well, we divided the, the objects uh, into some mm, into smaller parts and compared them together using culture call function. And here you can see some standard errors, which are uh, more or less under two centimeters. And here I'd like to show, like, four examples of four details of the comparison. Uh, all the details were scanned both, of both scanners, so we have two point clouds. Each point cloud was filtered by statistical output function, also some samples, as it should be according to the literature. And uh, we compared the BLK, the point cards of BLK to go to BLK 360 and check the distances of call to call compression. And here you can see that, uh, uh, that 97% uh, of the points, uh, were within two centimeters, eight, almost 90% within one centimeter. So on a church world, it, uh, the, the result between the scanners is uh, very similar. Here you can see highlighted uh, points which were over the two centimeters. Uh, so it, it was uh, uh, mainly on the wall decoration. Here I have example on windows. So in your own window frame, you also have some points which were over two centimeters. But overall, 88% of the uh, of the of the points were within two centimeters again. In room, uh, again, 88% uh, of the points were within two centimeters. But here you can see that the uh, uh, majority of the points were not under one centimeter, but over one centimeter, but still quite respectable accuracy. And the last object which we compared with uh, were stairs. Uh, 96 percent of the points were under two centimeters, and uh, here is also overlay of the uh, of the original documentation and the point cards uh, just to uh, just to present that uh, uh, we can use the scanners for uh, creating BI model, but also we can due to the fastness of the BLK to go, we can also use the the point cards from the BLK to go uh, just uh, even for checking of the of the already constructed I, by, by I, the IA model. And uh, to conclude, I'd like to say that uh, we, we've seen comparable accuracy between the results of the, of the selected uh, laser scanner. Uh, most of the uh, distances were under two centimeters, which is quite sufficient for indoor mapping. Uh, also, we would like to conclude that uh, uh, the scanning of the lk 2 go is sufficient for quick accuracy check of the original documentation of, of the BI documentation. Uh, blk 2 go is of course fastest solution, and uh, we we think that uh, blk 2 go is a very good option for indoor mapping. So uh, that's everything uh, from me. Thank you. Okay. Okay. Thank you. So uh, this section doesn't research do uh, the question at the time for questions. So we're just moving forward to the next presentation. Uh, the Greek Roman act we do the three dimensional reconstruction of the stress of photography, photography, and the most spirit on your view from Greece. Hello, the title of my presentation is the Greek Roman Aqueduct, the three dimensional reconstruction with tendestral photography. And my name is Eftimo Spirito and Georgiou. Now I work as freelance and special planning in Thessaloniki. If you work about me, I have work experience as journalist in urban planning in architecture and planning industry. The meaning of my presentation is the, is the part of scientific category EB. And the purpose of my work is the construction of a 3D dimensional model of Greek Roman architecture in the city of Kavala. The five pillars of the documentation is firstly a beam, secondly, 3D model, in continuous urban planning, history, and photography. Which is the city of Kavala? The city of Kavala is a bridge city between modern and traditional architecture, the Greek and multinational everyday life. This is one photo of Marine in Kavala, and in the background there are the old city of Kavala. More details, Kavala in Europe, where is the location of Kavala?
can you see the uh, very important strategic point of Kavala because uh, there are union in the contrast about the mountains, about the sea, about the agricultural uh, land and urban fabric. More details. Can you see that Kavala uh, is located near the sea, near the mountains? Uh, the agricultural land is near, and now the urban fabric created by Ipodamia Rimotomia, the Ipodamia system of the city, with clear lines and uh, very specific and certain uh, roads. The process of the project, first I visit to Kavala, secondly I search information for suitable moment, the photographic shoot, and etc. I uh, work in the software Zephyr and the process of the conference. The main object, the aqueduct, is perhaps the most famous moment in the modern city of Kavala. The, uh, for example, the extensive water supply system built by supply water at the Rick Rock of the Presidio Panagia and created in the ancient and medieval phase. This is a photos about the front view of Kavala, of the aqueduct. And this is behind front. Can you see the arches? Can you see the quality of stone? The reconstruction of being based in the Italian software Zephyr. And the methodology of the 3D model has a proposed that industrial photography in the rapid and effective way. The result of the work is the presentation of the three-dimensional model of the Arcuduc. This is the screenshot of, of the uh, software to analyze the, uh, the steps. The advantage of the photogrammetric documentation have a role in the storage of the three-dimensional form of the historical building and the smart promotion of the historical tourist and urban aspect. This is the point cloud. This is the front view of Arkiduk. This is the behind side. The most important advantage is the study of the quality of stone and the measure between the arches. The result is the smart, simple, and innovative standard. It is important. The points following. Thank you. Thank you in Czech for hospitality. For extra information about me, can you uh, search the, this social media? Well, uh, thank you. Uh, we jump to another uh, presentation uh, from the team from Kazakhstan. Uh, using space survey materials for modeling hydrodynamic accidents at mining enterprises in Kazakhstan. So the authors from the East Kazakhstan Technical University. Good afternoon, dear participants. My name is Dr. Fadna Lajani. I'm from Kazakhstan, Eastern Mother City. I'm working in the city of Kazakhstan Technical University. And I would like to present my topic of our research using special wave materials for modern hydrodynamic accidents at mining enterprises in Kazakhstan. Today, as the world experience shows, the probability of accident in hydraulic structure has increased over the last five, 15 years, which is primarily associated with the passage of fluids exceeding the desired water levels. And uh, nowadays, uh, 
phrase. Uh, the stands are uh, currently located on the territory of the Republic of Kazakhstan and uh, given the natural and climatic conditions, floods uh, are an annual phenomenon on the territory of the country, but the development uh, and scale were very deep in different years significantly. Over the past uh, 15 years, more than uh, 320 floods have been recorded in Kazakhstan as a result of both natural and human factors. For example, 17% as print floods and 13% by rains and 10% by other reasons. Most of this structure has been in operation without repair or reconstruction for 15 years or more and uh, objects of higher risk. According to the research conducted by the specialists of the Ministry of Emergency Situations of the Republic of Pakistan, most of hydraulic structure, mainly for 28 large objects of restoration of means and uh, very uh, difficult and uh, dangerous objects. Operation of space imagery, they are uh, increasingly used to organize environmental monitoring and monitoring of natural and uh, anthropogenic environmental impact. And uh, we use uh, the remote sensing data for example, archival satellite imagery of obtaining the basic special basis of the territory, high resolution operational shifting and uh, operational radar search. The object of the research is a talent dump of the concentration plant located in Shimanaka district of East Kazakhstan region. And uh, the dam is made of bulk loam, and the area of the telling dam is followed in the southwest place and the northwest. And the volume of water in the telling parts um, about uh, 100,000 uh, meters. The method based on direct hydrodynamic modeling of area flooding was used to calculate hydrodynamic accidents and model the dynamic of area of flooding in the results of bricks. And uh, we can see main tasks to be solved, solved uh, in the above approach and the primary factors influencing the dynamics of flooding. For example, underground water sources, parent features, the uh, characteristics of the underlying surface in other different. We use the uh, remote sensing data and uh, perform modeling and calculation in hardware software complex, EMGIS. And the computer model is based on the latest high efficiency mathematical calculation algorithm. And the refinery. We use a digital program and the uh, basis and the information modeling methods we use to input data in format and the WG and remote sensing data. When modeling hydrodynamic accidents at the site, the following levels of stages are projected with the considerate in the main ones, the initial water level in the tense form of the configuration plan before modeling of the southwest and the northeast. Result of impact of water flow the bottom of the channel is washed away in the side uh, walls of channel collapse with the formation of natural flow. And when modeling the dynamics of flooding, several variants of the formation of the bridge in various sections of them in the uh, southwestern and northeastern parts of telling them we can consider it in the uh, figure. Numerical modeling uh, of the processing of dam. As a result, we 
was based in algorithmic of self-consistent population. And the results that we can see in, in the pictures when uh, floating area gains development of hydrodynamic accidents as a tennis dam of concentrator on the three dimensional map uh, in scale 25,000. Uh, it's a final week of uh, results. For example, the tire building depth on floor velocity in this case reached 5 meters, and time the river of the cloud wave to bar river bed is a three hours. And the area of particular polluted territories of industrial and residential buildings. And, um, and the finally, I can answer. And the finally, I want to see uh, these technologies in our country is new, and we we will uh, work with. Uh, Operation is the uh, modeling, and um, thank you very much for your attention. Goodbye. Okay, uh, we skip uh, the next presentation because the officer Hello. <laughs> hasn't sent us. Uh, the video poster and the next one is the study of kinematic GNSS surveying the beam georeferencing. Good day, dear. Good day, dear listeners and colleagues. Nowadays, the use of GNSS systems is an integral part in position tasks for various tasks the required measurement accuracy exists. So different strategies are used to determine the solution of the position. GNSS systems receive signals from a large number of satellites. However, the signals are distorted, which leads to measurement errors and degrade position accuracy. There are a number of GNSS errors that affect accuracy. Some of them are insignificant while others can give an error up to a meter. The use of GNSS systems in urban environment is limited since a densely populated city with a developed infrastructure with a large percentage of high-rise buildings. Geometry errors occur that ultimately affect the measurement. The main objective of the work was to analyze the accuracy assessment of, the, of GNSS systems. We conducted three series of experiments by complex research of GNSS accuracy for mobile kinematic and kinematic bucket test in order to determine the influence of various sites on the accuracy of the determination of coordinates using GPS receivers. For the mobile kinematic tests, the three GNSS receivers were used to collect data on open and canopy sites were chosen to execute the kinematic tests. Javad external antenna was mounted on a trolley, which contained other equipment including the splitter, which facilitates the connection of the GS-10 and Triumph-1 receivers to the same antenna. The track was circled 11 times. For the first 5 laps, the receiver were configured to observe signals from both GPS and GLONASS satellites and GPS only for another 5 laps. For the 11th lap, the Javad receiver was configured to observe signals from the only the GLONASS constellation, while the GS-10 was switched off. To analyze the results, we compared the results obtained by different methods and locations. When comparing the test results obtained using the GPS and GLONASS constellations, it became clear that the GS-10 showed the best results in all respects. The results showed that the GS-10 had more at RTK solutions at Javad and in the canopy where Javad had autonomous positioning, the GS-10 uh, has DGPS, sometimes a float point solution. As a result, GS-10 2D, 2D perspective is more accurate than Javad. GS-10 only had DGPS and RTK solutions, while Javad had float SPS and RTK solutions. Also, comparing the results, it's evident that both the northing and easting of the GS-10 are more precise than the JAVAP. 
Hence, the GS10 2D precision was better than the Javad. Analyzing <coughs> results using only the GPS constellation, the GS10 also performed better. It's worth mentioning that GPS only 2D and 3D precisions for Javad seems to be better than GPS plus GLONASS 2D and 3D precisions. The GPS only 2D precision for the GS10 had more RTK fixes in the tree tunnel than GPS, GLONASS, GPS plus GLONASS 2D positioning. Comparing the results of the coordinates, we found out that the GS10 and Javad Easting are generally of the same precision, but the northing for the GS10 is marginally better than the Javad. The bucket tests were done on canopy side and, and on the open side using the GS10 and 3MF1 receivers. Two points were established on each side. On both sides, two persons covered each receiver with iron buckets at the same time for 30 seconds, while the other two keep and record the time it took the receiver to acquire first fix after the bucket were removed. This process was repeated 20 times in the open area. However, the sample size was difficult to attain simultaneously on the canopy side. Thus, during Thus, during the occupation time for this site, only three <coughs> concurrent bucket tests were done for both receivers. Three separate tests for the Javad was also obtained and six individual tests for the GS10. When analyzing the results kinematic bucket test, we found out that the, for the open site, when the bucket on the GS10 lost communication and satellites look instantaneously, while the Javad had flowed solution during the packet on time. However, the GS10 had a faster recovery time in the open environment. For both the open and vegetation bucket test, 16 satellites were used after the bucket was removed to attain the first fixed solution. We also noticed that the, when the GS10 had a fix, it lasted longer than the Javad. We were informed that this was due to the different algorithms the GS10 algorithms perform uh, redundancy check by comparing different measurements and will not produce a fix if the measurement did not correlate. Hence, it may take longer to get fixed but will also maintain, maintain it longer. This redundancy checking may help also control to the GS10 static solutions in canopy environment not being fixed. Comparison of coordinates after first, <coughs> after first fix on the open side and canopy side showed that the GS10 had the better average for horizontal solution. However, an average the Java height and 3D solutions were better than the GS10. The coordinates after first fix on the vegetation side are similar to those on the open side. That is, the GS10 had the better average for horizontal solution and the Javad height and 3D solutions were better than the GS10. However, these results are not definite since only three samples were executed concurrently in the vegetation environment. This study aims, this study aims to analyze the accuracy assessment of various genesis processing strategies under various conditions. In concluding, it's evident that for the mobile kinematic tests, the GS10 dem uh, dominated when the both GPS and GLONASS constellations were used. It was also the better receiver when only satellites from the GPS constellation were used. The Javad was the only receiver capable for tracking GLONASS-only satellites. However, it was impossible to obtain fixed solutions due to GLONASS satellite signals being frequency modulated. Based on the results of estimation on the open side, we can conclude from the comparison that the GS10 horizontal solution between dual and single frequency processing was the most consistent, but the Javad 3D was the most stable. In the open environment, the GS10 precision was significantly the best. While the Javad precision was the worst, regarding the bucket tests, the GS10 had a faster recovery time in the open, but it's difficult to state which receiver performed better in the vegetation cover. Thus, based on the results, it's, it also shows the presence of good satellite is also limited by the survey conditions. 
affecting the use of GNSS in crowded urban environments. Thank you for your attention. And the last one is the roof leak detection by thermography of as built beam. Uh, David Zaharandni, Czech Technical University. Dear all, my, my name is David Zahradnik and I am PhD student of Geomatic on CTU in Prague. Today I will present to you roof leak detection by thermography and results implementation in Tubim. There are several solutions like electropool test, needle test and smoke test, but they are limited by size of the roof. UAV thermography allows to detect roof leaks on the large horizontal roofs. Roof leaks are detected by humid heat insulation. DJI drone with RGB and thermal camera was used for capturing data. DJ Mavic 2 Enterprise Advance allows capturing RGB and TR images simultaneously. RGB and TR cameras parameters are seen in tables on the slime. Flight mission was planned for 20 meter altitude above roof for TR orthopsic resolution 2 cm on pixel. Images was cap were captured only with vertical direction to achieve best result of thermography. High overlap was set on frontal and side direction because RGB and TR images for alignment were processed independently. RGB and TR dataset was produced by structure from motion method in Agisop Metashi. First step of process is alignment of picture and time point detection. Georeferencing of the model was omitted for reason of using RTQ module. Georeferencing precision of RTQ module is sufficient for roof detection. Thus, the dense point cloud, dam, and orto mosaic were produced. Second step is the process TR images as RGB images with different usage of geometric data from RGB project. If TR images were proceed like RGB images, low quality of dense point cloud and dam are expected. RGB and TR dataset alignment is optimized with control point and subsequently RGB dam is imported to TR project and orto mosaic is proceed. Roof leaks are detected by radiant heat on the surface of horizontal roof. Humid heat insulation has changed heat capacity in comparison with the dry one. Difference can be seen when the air temperature is changing like sunrise and sunset. Thus, roof leaks are spotted at this daytime by thermography. Roof leaks are recorded manually by comparison RGB and TR auto mosaic. On the last figure, there are three ellipses to be seen. On the upper part of the figure is, is RGB auto mosaic. On the lower part is the TR auto mosaic. Green ellipse indicates shadow cast of the antenna on the roof. Red and purple ellipse have some change of color on RGB auto mosaic. But radiant heat on TR or Tomozek is different. It is caused by something else than change of color. The only explanation is humid heat insulation under PVC foil. On the right figure is example of automatic roof leak detection. Process in includes RGB or Tomozek segmentation and classification to PVC foil, roof window, footpad, and other accessories. Next step is the segmentation TR auto mosaic and classification by radiant heat only on classified PVC foil areas. Data from roof leak detections like auto mosaic is better to visualize in the GIS environment. Connection between BIM and GIS is through the roof. BIM roof element contains instead of hyperlink into GIS environment. Roof structure plan in GIS environments helps to identify risk of the roof leakage. Water can be can leak into building and damage high cost accessories. Roof leak has same properties like in BIM environment. So roof leaks properties can be connected through the BIM 
and GIS environment. Two roof, two roof leaks were spotted on the testing roof. They are seen on the figure, figure on the slides in BIN environment on the left and GIS environment on the right. Thank you for your attention and for your time. That's it with the uh, video poster session. Um, the next section should be at uh, 4 p.m. But due to, you see, the previous section has trailed out. So we decided to postpone for 15 minutes. So now you have time for the coffee break.